Hey, what's up guys? JB here and welcome to JB TV. What do you think of that? So in this short video, all we're going to be doing is using this round over router bit in the router to put a radius on the shelves. So I've got a couple of pieces of southern yellow pine here and I'm going to put these up in the kitchen. I need a little bit of extra storage space. I want to put these up in the kitchen so rather than just have this square edge what I'm going to do is put a bit of a profile on it. Well what do you think of the apron? I found it in an old toolbox but I thought you know what it's not bad is it it's going to keep the dust off my top so uh, I'm going with it anyway here's the router bit so this is a 12.7 millimeter radius half inch shank router bit and this particular brand of router bit is by Trend. Now I'll put a link in the description box down below. I think this cost about £30 or something and I bought this when I was doing some window sills. So I'm going to use this on my kitchen shelves. Now this router bit does come with two bearings and as you can see the bearing that is on here now is kind of flush with the bottom part of the blade here which means that if this is your board it will only round the bottom section of your board so if I run it round my board this way it will keep this section flat and then it will cut into the board up here now I can either do it so it has a bit of a lip here or I could do it so it just rounds it like this so either straight round or round with a bit of a step here now if I was to change this bearing and there is a smaller one inside the packet here what you could then do is actually have a step then around so we could actually make the profile of these shelves look a little something like this so we could either have it like this or we could have it something like this so we've actually got one two three four options here as to how we actually want this end to be now I'm thinking this one here I'm wondering whether that's a bit too much detail I don't know it might look all right but I quite like this one and the reason I like this one is because it actually looks quite good when you turn it upside down so this would be the top surface of the panel and then it kind of rounds underneath and then you've got a little step on it so I think that's the profile there that I'm going to go for. Now we'll just move the router out the way for a moment and what we want to do is get our boards fixed down onto the workbench. Now because of the size of them and the fact that I'm going to be machining three edges it doesn't leave me anywhere to fix it to my bench other than screwing it down and I'm definitely not doing that so what I have done and I've just put whoops let's put a big hole in the ceiling so what I have done here as you can see I've made two big holes in my bench which I will use to put a clamp through and I can clamp this back edge and that will allow me to go all the way round the shelf without having to stop and move it and what have you. So let's get this clamped down and ready to rock and roll. Now this timber has got a little bit of a bow in it. It has warped and moved and changed shape very slightly 
Um, but it's fine because there's only one of them and it's going up on the wall so you're not going to notice it, it's not that bad. What I just need to do is decide which face I want as the upper and lower face. Now this piece doesn't look too bad at all. It looks a little bit rough there where it hasn't quite been planed down enough. Um, it's got a tiny little knot here, um, but these marks are very superficial, so a little bit of sanding and they will come out. So this is the face I'm going to machine, I just need to clamp it now to the bench. Now I'm using some pretty old clamps here, but the great thing is, is because they're so old, you can actually take the end off of here quite easily, well easy enough anyway, and that allows me to put that in here to clamp it to the bench. So I'm actually going to feed it up this way. There we go, I'll just do that up lightly for now. And to protect this, so I'll just put a, a bit of timber under here. Now it doesn't need to be hanging over the end of the bench because the router is not going to go that deep. So I can just leave it kind of in this position. It's hanging over very slightly. That's absolutely fine. So we'll just go in with the next one here. That one went up on a bit easier. That's not going anywhere. Perfect. So if you want to clamp a piece of timber like this to a bench, drill some holes in it and get yourself some old clamps. So here's my router. It's an Urbau router. Uh, not a bad brand at all. It's kind of a mid-range product in my opinion. It's not massively expensive but it does feel like good quality. It's got a really nice feel to it. Now you can check the video out of me looking at this and all the different features. I'm not going to be doing that right now. This is just about machining these shelves. Now I've got the half inch collet in here. If I just take that off so you can see. There we go. So in the nut is the collet. So that's the collet there and obviously the router bit goes into there. Now on this router bit you can actually see a marking just about here which indicates the minimum distance that you should insert the shank into the collet for safety reasons obviously. So what I will do here is just wind the I'll just wind the nut with the collet onto the router just a little bit and then put the router bit in and I'll probably put it around that mark. I don't want to go too deep because it might actually limit the depth that I can go down onto this board. That's the only thing you might have to play around with how deep you do actually put the uh, router bit. So just holding that in position just so it doesn't slip as we tighten up the nut and the collet. And I'm just double checking the depth that I've put that router bit. There we go. Just do that up finger tight and then I'll keep my finger on that button and I'll just give it a couple of turns. You don't need to go really tight, like really yank it because it is self-tightening as it spins. There we go, that's perfect. The other thing as well, this um, Southern Yellow Pine is quite a, it is a soft wood, but it's actually quite different to your standard pine because it's a lot denser. It's still soft, but it's denser. And in my opinion, it means it doesn't splinter as much. So going around the corners is quite nice. 
Rule number one, make sure you adjust it without it plugged in. Rule number two, when you're using a router bit, make sure that you're working on the right hand side of your work as you go forward. Otherwise you're going to be back cutting and it's more likely that the router will catch and fly out of your hands, which is not a good thing. So this spins clockwise, so it's spinning around this way. So what I will do is start here and I will come around that way. So it's a rather big circle, I know, but if the cutter is spinning this way, it's constantly cutting into your work. Right, let's get the depth sorted out. So we've already established the way in which I want the profile to be on my shelf. So I just need to work out how deep to go. Now, in order to get a step on this edge here, I need to make sure that the tip of the blade here, sorry, the tip of the router bit comes just below and that will give me my step. You might want to do a few kind of test cuts on, a, um, on another bit of timber if you're not that familiar with it. If you're not really confident, try it out first just in case you end up ruining your lovely bit of timber. So what we can do here with the router just hanging off the edge is just push that down just so we can see the tip of that router bit just cutting in to the shelf. So right about there is perfect. Now what I've just realised is the depth that I want the router to be does actually go a little bit lower than the shelf or it's very very close so what I need to do is just lift this up very slightly so it will clear the bench. Right there we go so we've got a couple of bits of timber underneath we've lifted it up we've clamped it back down let's try again There we go, I've got the height of the router set now. I think I'm going to be pretty happy with how deep that router is going in order to give me the, the correct profile. So with that locked, the router is locked up. Let's get it on and uh, let's get it going. Y'all ready for this? Do, 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 do. I'm going to buy myself a proper dusk mask like respirator at some point but for now we're going to use this the only problem is now my glasses steam up as uh, when I breathe out it comes up here so uh, let's take these off that's best look like Donald Duck There we go, that is quite nice. And look how much that's broken out on the corner there. Actually, not at all.
beautiful. There we go, look at that. Super smooth, lovely. That's just what I was after. I've just gone over the edges here with a bit of 240 paper just to take that edge off. But other than that, I'm really happy with how that looks and feels. It's super smooth, it's really nice. What I'm going to do now is just take it off the bench, unclamp it and just run over this edge here and here with a little bit of 120 paper just because there's a little bit of a, a sawn edge on there. So a bit of 120 paper on a small block. And I just want to give it a bit of a rub. It's not going to take a lot. So we've just run over this top edge with the orbital sander and I think I've got about a, a hundred grit paper on there so it should be about right. <laughs> Fantastic, all done. There we go, one shelf done. Well, I've got the other one to do now, but there you go. That's how it's going to sit, just like that. So we've got a completely flat top here, but if we turn it, it's actually got this lovely profile which kind of curves underneath. So when it's sitting quite high, it'll give a nice feature to the shelf. Oh yeah, I'm loving that. Nice. Fantastic. Well, that's that one finished. I have got another one to do now, but you don't really want to see me do that all again, do you? So I will publish another video when I've decided how I'm going to finish them and what kind of brackets I'm going to use. So uh, look out, because that one will be coming. I tell you what, if you're doing any kind of sanding, get yourself some of this mat, because it really does keep your workpiece still if you're doing sanding or drilling or whatever you're doing. Well, that's it for me, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope it's helped and given you a bit of an insight into using a router and particularly a, a profile bit like this 12.7 radius cutter. If you've got any questions or comments, you know what to do. Leave them in the box below, in the comments um, box below, and I'll do my best to respond and reply to those. So that's it, I'm finished, done, I'm out of here. Now don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon to get notifications when I release a new video. 
and you'll get to see lots more videos just like this one. So guys, just check out some of my other videos before you go. I'm sure you'll find something there that you like. Magic, I'm out of here. See you soon.